hello and welcome back to read becca so this is my weekly update another week has slipped by um we're checking in on what i read what i'm currently reading what i'm looking forward to reading so um i had a weird reading week i felt like i wasn't reading very much but i, I made pretty good progress on everything that i was reading each time i was sitting down so i don't know what was going on but i think it's probably because i was i was off recently off work and had read a ton the past couple weeks because of that so I don't know but regardless i did finish a few things so i finished up i think first on audio um broken by jenny lawson and i have read in print a couple of her previous works and she writes kind of essay collections memoirs sort of thing um and it's always very funny and about mental health this one in particular was so good um she writes a letter to her health insurance that was just very devastating to read um and i think very poignant for us right now especially and she talks about writing this before everything shut down um and at the end she I don't know if it's just the audio because she talks about recording the audio in her closet for instance because of the situation that we're in and how weird that has been um so so that was added on after the fact obviously but um it was it was just really hit the spot and I was listening to that it's a very short and um enjoyed enjoyed her sense of humor through a lot of misery uh that is what really all of her books have been and I, I just really love her her tone and I think she got famous originally for her blog um she went by the bloggess I think I I don't know I never knew until her books so so I loved that one I thought it was fantastic definitely up to her usual standard really really great great essays so um, and that that would be my first nonfiction November pick. So I that was my my kind of one that was on the bubble of as to whether I was going to be able to get to it, but I got to it first. So, and then I have talked about this one a little bit before, and I will I will wrap this up more in my uh, November check in next week. And um, I started this this past week and finished it. This is Better Than People by Rowan Parrish. It's a male male contemporary romance, and it's all about. Um, Jack, who is a children's illustrator that hasn't been able to draw, and Simon, who is extremely anxious. He is to the point that sometimes he can't talk to people, sometimes he stutters, sometimes he um, throws up because because he's so anxious. And it's, it is to that point where it's, it's crippling for him at times. And um, so he is volunteering or not not volunteering he has signed up for um pet share which is an app that allows people to take care of other people's pets because he lives with his grandmother who's terribly allergic his grandmother was so fun i i absolutely loved her um she's quirky and she is um gives a little sly sly wink and nod at times about what's going on between the two guys and everything and yeah she was she's great fun um but so he has signed up to do this and Jack has need for uh, somebody to take care of his pets because he's just fallen and broken his leg and he's got that kind of gruff exterior where he's been hurt before and um, doesn't really want to let people in and so um, he also connects more with animals than people and so they they slowly get over this barrier between each other and I mean, it's so so sweet like the relationship between these two is just delightful and I, I just enjoyed almost everything about this but there were a couple things that, that did bother me so I'll talk about that a little more um, next week at the November check-in. Um, then I finished a very short slim little one this is a novella length um, People Like Them by Samira Sidira and translated by Laura Vernod from French um, Samir Sadira is a Algerian, uh, Algerian who moved to France and um, that's, she has an interesting background that I had never read anybody like that but um, I thought this was going to be a thriller. It's more a crime fiction for sure. Um, it's pretty slow and there's no real twist to it but you start in this um, this alpine village basically and it's kind of like a quiet village that's a bit run, maybe run down and um a family move in and are kind of flashy and have really fancy stuff and um and riches and wealth and charisma and all of that and then um this this other family so 
my white family who are, are local um, are becoming friends with them. And the, the family that has moved in and has all this stuff is a black family. And um, one of the families is murdered by the other family. And so you don't really see very much of the children of the family in either case, but you do see quite a bit of the two parents on each side. And it's really interesting because this starts with kind of the most gruesome parts. Um, and from the perspective of the murderer's wife, um, and it's really interesting how it's done because there's like a second person writing elements to this where she's she's observing the trial. It's starting at the trial and the account of, of the murders in the trial is really the most gruesome part. And then it jumps back and looks at the murderer's history and um, it looks at um, how their relationship between the two families became strained. Uh, so that's that's a slow progress. But then there is also this fact that uh, they are trying to discuss, uh, or the, the trial is really pushing to determine if there was a racial element that happened here, and, and if that was the spark that set off this, this murder of an entire family. And so that was really, really interesting. So it was a slow one. It was quite short, so it read really fast, but the pacing was very slow and, and thoughtful, um, very introspective for sure. So I, I wound up liking this quite a bit. Um, it didn't blow me away because I was kind of expecting a thriller and it was definitely not, not that at all, but it was really interesting and the writing was, was very, very different. So I love the writing aspect of it. So I would definitely pick up something from the author again. So I think that's what I finished um, in progress. I'm almost done with Burning God by R.F. Kuang, which is the final Poppy War book. And I'm listening to that on audio and I think I'm 80% in. So I'm really close. I'm definitely gonna finish it by the end of the year. Um, then I have Sissy by Jacob Tobia. And this one, I felt like I wasn't making any progress, but I'm like hundred pages in. So great progress on that. I think I will be able to, to finish that uh, in the next week or so. And then my two that I haven't really gotten into, um, I have The Love Study as my next romance. I've got this one and one more to finish out prompts, woohoo, uh, by Chris Ripper. And then I have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. And this is to finish out my Hugo reading. So this one I started, um, or, or I just barely dipped into the first chapter. So, so barely started. Um, but this one is on the docket for the rest of the day today. And then love study, I think is going to be tomorrow. But yes, I think I think those are going to be more than enough. Um, so that is that is my reading. I feel like I did pretty good this week. I'm very happy with my November progress and all of the books have been really fun. So that's reading in other stuff going on in my life. Uh, kittens. I I do have kittens and I will put some footage in here so you can see them because I didn't get yucky kittens. Um, so the situation wound up changing from last week when I had, I had mentioned there were a large number of sick kittens at the shelter that they needed people to take short term desperately. Um, unfortunately, right before I was going to go pick them up um, and heard back, they turned out to have ringworm. So I have done ringworm kittens before. Ringworm is not like actual worms. It's a like a skin, a topical fungal infection type thing. Um, so I have done ringworm kittens before and they are a lot of work and they're incredibly infectious. Um, so I know how to manage those, but I, I already have a medical foster long-term and he takes daily care as it is. So it was kind of like, yeah, I can take some kittens for a couple of weeks and that's it. Ringworm kittens are going to be six or eight weeks best case scenario and they're going to require daily care. So it was like, no, I, I can't really take those guys, but do you have others that I can take? I will do that. So they gave me two semi-feral kittens. So um, I have two, they're six weeks now. I've had them for a week, um, but five weeks is like perfect perfect for semi-feral kittens because that's right where they're still socializable and they are going to turn around pretty quick. If they're in 
a foster home where somebody can dedicate like just 10 or 15 minutes to them um, every time they have food and you only feed them when you are there. You do not just give them food. They have to be like interacting with you to get the food. So um, yeah, so it's been a week. They've already pretty well turned around. Um, they had them in the bathroom so that we could get keep everything completely cleaned and I'm gonna have to bleach down the bathroom. We got them dealt with fleas, lots and lots of fleas. Um, but they've moved now into the foster room and they're still being kept isolated from my cats for, for now. Um, but everything's been great. They're, they're very healthy. They are, like I said, pretty, pretty well social. They're still a little skittish, um, at times, but you know, if I sit in the room, they will come out and start playing. Um, so yeah, they're, they're really chill now. Um, yeah, I, so I think that's it for the, for the kittens. I will definitely, like I said, insert some footage at the end. They're very, very cute. Um, and their names are appropriately Athena and Medusa. Medusa is the extra hissy one. So they're, they're sweet. Um, yeah, so I had uh, a little bit of a, a book buying splurge today. I went to pick up the doggy photos that I mentioned I got. So it was at his, um, his usual daycare slash groomer, but at a different location that I had to go to. And it's like in a very upscale suburb of the city. And so I, I went over there and picked up the photos in there's a half price books over there, uh, like a mile away. And so on the way back, I stopped and went to half price books. And I, I guess because it's an upscale suburb, most likely, um, their selection is very different from the one I usually go to, which has a lot of more old stuff, a lot more um, paperbacks, that kind of thing. And this, they had lots of new stuff. There were book of, book of the month books, loads of those. I saw those all over. Uh, so yeah, I splurged and spent about $70 <laughs> there. Uh, went crazy, but I got some really great stuff. So I will definitely be having a haul this month to, to uh, share what I got. So we'll see that. Uh, that was the big excitement as well. It got very cold here. So I feel like I have a weekly weather update now, but it, it was so weird. So, so weird yesterday. Uh, the temperature was like 40, which is about freezing for those not on Fahrenheit. Um, so, but we got flurries, like the wind was icy, icy cold, and it started doing just teeny tiny little snow flurries on us. And today is very cold. So I had to break out the gloves to take cinnamon for his walks. It was, it was real, real brisk. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we're into winter apparently now. It went from 70 earlier this week to now freezing. I think we're supposed to get below freezing overnight in the next couple of days. So we're, we're there, I guess. Um, yeah, so I think I think that's it for my week. There hasn't been anything too terribly exciting, thankfully. My, week's ha my week has been full of kittens. Uh, it's been all my energy has been going to them. So that's probably why I was feeling like I wasn't reading very much. And, um, yeah, I think in terms of recommendations, I've only got one to point you at that I really, really enjoyed. So, um, the channel Bookish is doing a kind of a series, I guess, on, um, kind of history and race. And there is a video talking about the, the ideals that the U.S. was kind of founded on and, doing a critical analysis of whether or not um, there was racism there. And so I really enjoyed a lot of the points that were brought up there. Really, really enjoyed the discussion. So I will, I will link that video because that was a wonderful video. I think, I think that's all I have for, for recommendations for this week. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I am so behind on videos right now. I have, I don't think I've been this behind in a long time, in probably over a year, but I'm, I'm like just getting to last week's Friday reads. Normally that's the first thing I do on Saturdays is watch a bunch of Friday reads um, while I'm having making coffee and breakfast and stuff. And yeah, I, I haven't done it. I'm, I'm completely behind. <laughs> so I haven't seen last week's or this week. So whatever, we'll, we'll get caught up eventually or I'll start skipping stuff and it won't matter. I will probably not miss out on anything critical, but I am missing all of your faces for the most part. Um, however, kittens are a pretty good replacement for any faces that I'm missing. So, so I will manage. Um, all right. Yeah. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. 
I literally can't take it, babe. Teeny Athene, you're so cute. And you're purring. Are you purring like a motor? Yeah, you're squeaky.